Hmm. 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 Haha! <laughs> and that is just one thing that you can do with the Hexblade. And if you're here, it means that you're looking into making a character about the Hexblade. And here we're going to be a little bit unorthodox with it. Subverting ideas and really changing what it means to be a Hexblade, reflavoring it to be a character that more fits you. Hopefully giving you inspiration for your Hexblade Warlock character so that when you summon your specters, it will be a spectacle. Hello Acolytes, welcome to the Cleric Corner. My name is Riker, and here we talk about all things Dungeons and Dragons, tapping into our higher powers to create worlds more unique and stories more impactful. Hexblades are known to get their magic by making packs from sentient weapons or creatures from the Shadowfell. Their main features include an armor and a shield with their spell casting, being able to curse enemies and then once killed, turning them into an undead servant. Arguably the most famous Gish characters with both sword and spells. But how can we make your character even more unique? Here we're going to touch on 10 different concepts for your next Hexblade. Starting with the He-Man, most of you might be familiar with the TV series and the associated toy line. A magical warrior that would unsheathe his sword and undergo a magical transformation, imbuing himself with strength, saying the words, by the power of Skull, I have the power. By the power of Grayskull. Instead of power from Grayskull, your character would get their power straight from their patron, and instead of getting all muscly, they might take on more of a form of dread, like unto the Undead Warlock. Of course, when you sheathe your sword, you get back to your regular form, and your curses might look more like the Ranger's Hunter's Mark in that sense. And if you've seen previous shows of He-Man, you know that after he transforms, he then points his sword at his cat, Cringer, and makes it transform into Battle Cat. I think that you can flavor your specters in a similar way, pointing your sword at a corpse that you just killed and imbuing them with the power of Skull. But speaking of specters, there's a whole lot that you can do with this. One, what they look like, and two, what you're even doing with them. With the Thrawler Hexblade, the reason that you're adventuring are these specters. Fitting in nicely with the vampire race lineage, you could be a vampire born looking for your thralls. And at the end of the 24 hour period where they're accompanying you, you can send them into a bat to fly away to your your home cave. Your patron could also be a kraken, and after you put certain people into servitude, you send them into the ocean to have a long walk back to your patron. And of course, mind flayers, beholders, or anything else that your brain could come up with could also be demanding these specters or thralls. Or you could just be a necromancer who is collecting bodies and sending them back to your home keep and slowly accumulating an undead army. You mark your target with a curse to begin this process. But what if instead of collecting bodies, instead you are collecting souls. With the Reaper Hexblade, your sword is a literal accumulation or spectral energy made from the souls that you vanquished. Perhaps these legions of souls live within you and you push out their ectoplasm into a physical blade. And here's another point of flavor potential, your weapon. What? could it look like? In this case, the process you undergo to channel a new weapon that you wield is you forcing the spirits to take a new shape. A non-consensual spiritual weapon, if you will. Or you can take more of a divine approach, being a messenger from the gods, that your task is to bring souls to the afterlife that is long overdue. You may also have the power to not let spirits move on to the afterlife quite yet and make them a specter for a little bit longer. Make your business their unfinished business and you won't let them go until they help you. And then of course your weapon being made out of divine energy or a sun blade, if you will. Your curse on a creature is an omen to tell them that their judgment day has come and their designated time of death is well, in just a few seconds. Some other ways that we can make our weapon unique is creating them out of different elements. With the elemental weapon, you embody one of the elements of nature. You may be ice themed with a long icicle lance or rock themed where you summon a rock gauntlet. Make a water whip or an invisible blade made of air. And for your specters, you could be infusing their souls into the elements around them or your element, making them elementals. Bind their soul with 
with the air to make an air elemental or water nearby to give them more of a water weird kind of feel. Once you have your fingers around a soul, who knows what you can do with it. And keeping with the elemental theme, your curses could be making someone overheat or fizzle with a static charge. But another element of nature deserves its very own category plants. The Spore Hexblade Warlock would make their weapons out of plant matter. Could be a rusted blade covered in algae or a literal blade of grass. Perhaps your whole arm turns into a whip-like vine or a branch or even like a pea shooter. Interesting point for your Hexblade is they actually don't need to be a melee fighter. With the exception of Staggering Smite and Wrathful Smite, none of your features or spells really require you to be up and close to the person. You can have ranged attacks. So that means guns, crossbows, arrows, you name it. We flavor these into poisonous cactus needles or bullet seeds. Both your curses and your specters could come from spores that you excrete from yourself being part plant yourself. These spores grow like fungi in the corpses of your enemies, kind of like zombie ants, how they work. And if you're not familiar with zombie ants, they are absolutely terrifying because the zombie takes over the brain of the ant and keeps it walking after it dies. Might actually be really fun to multi-class into Spore Druid, but while on the gross and disturbing, why don't we talk about making your own body your weapon? With the abomination, you fuse your weapon into your skin in the process of channeling it. Creating a literal bioweapon, imagine your blade being made from elongated fingernails, or a maul created from your bone. Your curse is coming from the fear that you put in other people. This could also be a blade made from your own blood, hearted into a blood red mace. Might actually have to check if it fits well with my blood blade sorcerer that I made. It's on my website, you can check it out in the link below. But also one of my Patreon members, Weaver Atropos, told me on Discord about making this a symbiote. Of course, having a sentient relationship with your armor and your sword, it being your patron, coming out of your body and giving you a weapon that it sees fit in the moment. If you wanna be a part of the cult or inner circle where we discuss future ideas, you can also find those links in the description below as well. As for your specters, they could either be blood elementals that you pull out of them once they die, or they could be an extension of your symbiote for a time. But another option for your Hexblade is using the body parts of other creatures, fusing them together to make a weapon. Take one from Godric the Grafted in Elden Ring and graft a wolf's head or drake's head to your arm and make it your weapon. A wolf barking and gnashing its teeth like it's still alive. And another picture that actually comes to mind is a Yagnoloth. Perhaps you've drafted a contract with one of these and your visage becomes like unto it. And just like Yagnoloth, the small arm is for spell casting and the big arm is for smashing things. But there are also less gross ways of modifying your body. One that takes a level of skill in artifice. The prosthetic hex blade is one that takes time to channel and integrate a weapon into a mechanical limb. Perhaps they make it where it can fold in and out like a giant switchblade. Also kind of like the Automel from Full Metal Alchemist. If your DM is really nice, they might even give you a big version of a Swiss Army knife where you can switch in and out different weapons as you so choose. Also kind of gives the picture of a weaponized inspector gadget, but talking about ranged weapons like we did before, you can also have a retractable gun. Your specters come from another contraption that you made where you throw it on the person and it becomes like an exoskeleton, or you take the soul itself as a power source like we also talked about and imbue it in a contraption of your own to power it, slowly draining the soul like a battery over the course of the next 24 hours. But if we stretch this artificer flavor into maybe more of a futuristic setting, we find the malware. And this one might depend a lot on your world setting, but I really like the idea of everyone in the future having body augmentations or implants that connect them to the intranet. And once an individual is disabled, your warlock can place in a virus to give them temporary control over that individual. And your curses could be the start of that hacking process. Double up on some enchantment magic, so to really drive the idea home, and then make your augmentations in your body an extension of your sword. Your sword being an augmentation itself, it could be the source of a malware, and it being a USB that you can literally plug into someone's brain. Your patron possibly being a supercomputer or an AI that you take this magic or abilities from. But of course, this also could be done in a medieval fantasy setting where it's more flavored to be mind controlled. And in order to get this person to be your specter, you need to knock them out and put them in a weakened state in order to take control of their mind. Now for the next idea, it's a little bit more simple, but just as much fun. With the magician hexblade, you 
you can summon and unsummon your sword, but it's really just a sleight of hand as you replace it with a bouquet of flowers. You're really good at hiding things on your person without other people knowing. You could also have a magic wand that turns into a sword, or you pull your sword out of your gullet like a sword swallower. Your curse is reflavored as distracting an audience enough to get the advantage. Casting spells out of your top hat or tarot cards, and your specters being more like puppetry or ventriloquy. To all of the Weekend at Bernie's references. But what if we didn't have a sword or weapon at all? Or at least a weapon that's a little bit more improvisational. The improv, of course, uses improvised weapons. And of course, doing it in this way, you might need proficiency in improvised weapons, but there are feats for that. I just love the image of a luchador or MMA fighter summoning a chair out of thin air. And now I know that you can't like summon and unsummon a sword strictly in the Hexblade subclass, and it's more of just a Pact of the Blade feature, but when else am I gonna talk about this? I can just imagine like an alcoholic who chose a beer mug as their weapon and summons that in opportune times when you're at the bar, not only for a fight. And the great thing is, is that because it's magical, it probably won't break when you smash it on somebody's head. And I also thought that it would be kind of fun to have your sword be a type of mimic and becoming something new every time that you pull it out. And it might be entirely up to your DM to choose what that might be. You could pull it out and it be a book, or you pull it out and it's a candelabra, or you pull it out and it's a French baguette. But with all of these ideas, I'm sure you can kind of mix and match and find flavors of your own. To say the least, it's a very popular and very excitable and strong subclass. So making it your own, I feel is so nice. And if you want to see other subclass flavor videos that I've done, check out out this playlist here, and if there are ones that I haven't done yet, please let me know your favorites in the comments below. But in the meantime, go out there and spread the good word of D&D and make the world a better place, both on and off the table. See you in the next one.